five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Friday nights we've had uh, my uh, wife on, but for the last uh, month uh, she has not appeared on this program because she doesn't want to. So uh, I have to figure out what I'm going to do for a half hour or 25 minutes while uh, she isn't there. And tonight I felt really lazy. Uh, and what I decided I would do is go back to an old interview we did a while back and uh, first of all, every now and then it goes out of sync, and every now and then it has glitchy problems. At the end of the interview, it freezes, actually, but it's worth playing because uh, I, it's, it's an interview with a guy that I knew when I was starting out in this business and was one of the reasons I got into this business, and I heard that he was around and he was still alive at like 92 years of age. And I figured, uh, gee, uh, why not talk to him? It uh, couldn't hurt, could it? So I'd like to replay that interview in case you didn't hear it with Ted Randall. It may not be familiar to a lot of our audience, uh, and it's not as familiar to me as it was years and years and years ago when I met this man. You don't remember meeting me, do you? Actually, I do not. Yeah. I used to go by the name Jerry Bennett. And I was a I was an aspiring broadcaster at that time. Well, at that time, I, I met so many people because I was traveling around the world. Yeah. And uh, meeting people all the time. That no, I'm have to apologize. Oh, I don't I, believe me, I didn't think you would. But let me let me tell you uh, uh, a little story about you know how I met up with you and what influence you had on me. And a lot of times. We influence people, and we never know we did. Um, you were on a station in San Francisco, which when I was a teenager was all the rage, K-O-B-Y, Kobe. Kobe, yeah. yeah, 1550. Yeah, this station, yeah. when it came on, was the first top 40 station in the Bay Area. When yes. people described what it was going to be, most of us went, who would want to listen to that? And then it That's went right. on the air, and we couldn't stop listening to it. And your your involvement in that station was as a jock, and I think you were also, were you the program director? Yes, I was both. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it talk, uh, we'll get to your meeting up with me in a bit, but talk about those days at KOBY, because those were the days when Top 40 really started. I mean, it had never existed Prior to that time, Gordon McClendon, Todd Storrs supposedly came up with the format, but they didn't do it in San Francisco. Explain how KOBY came to be. Well, KOBY came to be because, uh, let's see, I have to think of the owner now, Dave. Uh, it'll come to me in a second. Yeah, I'm, the, I'm the same way with names these days. Uh, at any rate, uh, I was at a radio station in Omaha, Nebraska, when Todd Storrs had just recently started. Yeah. Uh, top 40. Yeah. And I was intrigued because it was a daytime radio station, and it was number one by far of, of all the radio stations in Omaha. I mm -hmm. was at uh, Coil, K O I L, in Omaha, which later went to a top 40 format uh, and so forth. But I left K O I L and went to a radio station in Ottumwa, Iowa, wow. which is way the hell and gone somewhere. At any rate, uh, it, K, it was called K-L-E-E -E because the owner's name happened to be Lee something or other. And Lee was friends with Dave, it'll come to me in a second, who had several radio stations. And I wasn't to stay there. I was kind of learning the business and moving on. And I'd been at Omaha for a year and then at KLEE. -E, and I moved on some more. And I remembered that 
that that the radio station in uh, what the heck was it? It was uh, I was with Coil. Yeah. At, at any rate, I remember Top Forty and Dave. And when I was in, when I was looking for a job, I found Dave had a radio station in Mississippi. And when I and I went out to see him, and he hired me. <clears throat> I was in need of a job, and he hired me. While he was there, he was telling everybody that he was about to buy a radio station, KOBY, in San Francisco. I think it was called KEAR before when. Yes, it was. As, as a matter of fact. And I convinced him to let me go out to San Francisco. He mm. gave me a hundred dollars and said, "You're on your own, and I'll see you <laughs> when you get there." And uh, it was—I mean, I was—I was pretty pushy, and I was barely on the air in uh, Mississippi. WGVM, WGVM was mm. a radio station in, right. Miss, in Mississippi. At any rate, I got to San Francisco and. Uh, we all had to wait for a strike to get over, and uh, when we did, why, uh, we put together the radio station. But it, we really had, we had no, nobody who knew anything about Top 40, including Dave, the owner. And so we put it together, and within, I guess, I guess it was about six months after we were on the air, why I became program director. But prior to that, uh, we had been on the air maybe... Oh, I'd say a couple, three months, maybe, at any, around 13 weeks, and we already were showing something like 50% of the radio audience. Wow. It was incredible at that time, yeah. So we were there, and uh, uh, from there, I went on to do, uh, from that, I became program director, but then I was also invited to go out for a television show in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And uh, I got the, I got that show. It became the Ted Randall show at that time. And uh, but on KOBY, why we we had to use stage names. I was called Ted Rogers at that time. Mm -hmm. But made made the switch over pretty nicely. So I was at uh, at I had the TV show for nineteen it was nineteen fifty eight. Right, I remember it because I was a kid. Yeah. I was a, I was eighteen in nineteen fifty eight. OK. Mm -hmm. And K.O.B.Y. was it was just this force of nature that happened. All yeah. of a sudden, it just blew everything <laughs> off the map. Uh, and well, we knew, <clears throat> we knew we had to have 40, 40 top hits. Yeah. They've also had a radio station called K.O.S.I. in Denver. Mm -hmm. and we sort of patterned after that, but we didn't really have a pattern and he didn't know what to do. We just basically made for play paid the top forty popular records at the time. The idea was top forty plus maybe like five up and comers plus a hit uh, a, a, a hit. Well, one, a, the oldies but goodies, oldies but goodies had not arrived as yet. <laughs> These things so, were in the uh, process of becoming oldies but goodies as you were yeah, playing them. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then you're it. Why that was the. Uh, that was a story. Well, that had that, to be. That had I, to be. Ted on TV. When I went on TV, I left yeah. radio at that time. But a year later, uh, I didn't, wasn't happy with my contract and left TV. But just at that particular time, a new radio station in Oakland was coming up. K E W B. I applied for it. Yeah, and I applied for it and got the job there. And K E W B was such a force of nature that it killed yes, K O B Y. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and and, and we we had a program director Chuck Blower from uh, right. Hollywood, right? Who had, who was was the overall program director of uh, of that and was of, of the Kroll Collier chain. Now I don't remember at which point exactly it was that I met you, but I knew of you as being a force in the broadcasting business, and as a kid who was coming up, and I was working over KTIM in San Rafael. Uh, oh yes, doing part time, yeah. and you know, I, I I wanted radio in the worst way, and I figured the guy to talk to was Ted Randall, so I called you up, and I said I'd like to talk to you and come over and see what advice you have for me, and you were nice enough to say sure, and I remember wow. going over there, and you 
counseling me on what I should do, and eventually I think you gave me a job. I don't know. I you were a, you had become one of the earliest versions of a radio consultant. Well, I was. I created the broadcast consulting business. Yeah. Nobody else had done it before. Yeah. And and my first my first radio station there was KSRO in Santa Rosa. Right. But I went to KLAD in Klamath Falls, which I believe you also. Yes, I did. Consulted. At that, at about sometime in there, I had. 30 radio stations I was consulting with uh, on the West Coast. Yeah. But the fact that, so you know, the fact that I could talk to somebody in the business and just bend their ear was a thrill for a kid at that age, you know. Uh, and uh, I was, I remember one piece of advice you gave me that still kind of resonates with me. I said to you, I, we were talking about music, and I said, well, all my friends really like this kind of music. And you said to me, don't ever use that as a yardstick because you hang out with people who have the same interest and mentality that you do. You've got to think in terms of what the public wants. And, well, I, that, yeah. and that I lasted recall. with me. That lasted with me to this day, to this conversation. Well, that that was one of the premises. I I think what worked with with my consulting radio stations was precisely that, that I had to work. I had to worry about what would please the people, not what the people wanted, because the people seemed that that said. I mean, I talked with adults who said, "Oh, I'd never put that trash on my radio station." <coughs> Pardon me. Yeah. They said they would never put that trash on the radio station. I said, "Yeah, but most of your audience wants." wants this trash that you won't put on. They said, oh, and finally they allowed it and they were astounded. They were just astounded because it was, it was what everybody, it's, and it's a pretty much a premise with most businesses. If you talk about the clothing business, they'll say the same thing. It's not what you like yourself. It's immaterial. It's what the people will like. Yeah. And that piece of advice, oh, I mean, I'm sitting here today how many years later, I don't even want to count them, remembering yeah. sitting in that office with you and you telling me that specific piece of information, you know. Well, it shows that my brains don't go very far. <laughs> <laughs> right thing, I guess. No, but it was, it, it was terrific. And, you know, for a kid my age and, and wanting to go into the business, you gave me kind yeah. of a push in a, in a certain direction. And I know you, I don't, didn't think you would remember me because I was such an insignificant part of your life at that point. But for me, you were a major part of my life. Isn't that something? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, glad I, I'm glad I was a decent friend to you at the time. <laughs> yeah. And I went on to have a career that lasted until about five years ago. And uh, wow. I was very successful in San Francisco and mm -hmm. I was with Sirius XM. You know, and when I think about the about the influences that I've had in this business, there were a lot of them, but Ted Randall was one of them. You That's know? amazing. And and it's, so when I heard I were uh, then I then I heard you were still alive, I went, my God, I got to talk to this guy. You know. Well, I'm getting up there in the years. They're uh, they're. Moving along pretty rapidly now. <laughs> yeah, well, you never thought you'd get this old. Otherwise... Uh, no, that, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, do you mind me asking? I, I always tell people how old I am. I'm 79, so I figure you're getting close 92. to 90. You're 92. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this. You were in the radio business long after that, consulting and being on the air and so on. Uh, what, when you look at radio today, I tell people, you know, the radio business really doesn't exist anymore. It's right. You know, That's uh, right. when you and I were in this business, uh, it, it was an exciting place to be, you know, we were able to offer something to people they couldn't get anywhere else within a relatively, relatively short, uh, distance yeah. in other words they, they didn't have to go 50 miles to go find something it was on the 
on the radio, and the radios were tuned in, and uh, uh, they were able to find. I mean, Todd Storrs was the one who who found it because yeah. he listened to uh, jukeboxes. Mm-hmm. But when well, the the legendary story that I got because in the later years I worked for Gordon McClendon. And Dave Siegel was the owner of a KOBY. Oh, by the okay, way. great. See, eventually you yeah. remember the names. Uh, I. Um, uh, you know, I mean, I I just find that uh, um, all uh, that what's happening today is that uh, all the consolidation of the radio stations and the fact that all they care about is 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 keeping the station on the air. I mean, it's a t- it's not the business it was where we were having a good time. As I say, I work for Gordon McClendon, and yes. and the legend had it that the way Top Forty was invented was they were. He and Todd Stores, after the war, were sitting in a, a diner somewhere. Yeah. And they noticed Listen. that the noticed that the waitress kept going over to the jukebox and playing the same five songs over and over and over again. Yep. And one thing led to another, and they came up with top forty. Well, beyond Gordon McClendon, they gave Todd Stores the idea, and he took his own. His father had the money so that he could. So he bought him the daytime radio station, KOWH. Yeah. And when uh, he took a couple of di- a couple of his announcers over, and they were having lunch at another restaurant, and they were listening to the, they looked at the, the jukebox, and they found that they played the same 40 records over and over. They made a list of it, mm-hmm. one by one by one, and they found out that those were the only records that people played. and. So they tried it on the radio station, and immediately they became very, very well. They became the number one radio station, at least during the day, because they were a daytimer. I think I think it's an amazing it's an amazing story. It's an amazing history, and it's the yep. thing that pretty well. It, it, what happened was radio was in trouble at the at the time you went yep. with K O B Y and so on. Yep. It was in trouble because television existed, and it was still trying to do what television could do better, uh, drama shows, comedy shows, yeah. whatever. And so this came along and literally hypoed the radio. It gave well, the, the radio music, business a whole new reason for existence. Forgive me for interrupting, but the well, only music ahead. available at that time was music of your life, which hadn't been invented yet, but it was the Glenn Miller a big band stuff, and that was all they had. That was a, uh, uh, until Top 40. Well, I'll tell you what Top 40 did. It put my father out of work, because my father used to play in orchestras at the radio stations in San Francisco. And after a while, they didn't need the orchestras anymore. You know? Well, there are, a few things, there are a few things that time has told us, and one of the things uh, about Top 40 or Top 30 or whatever you want to call that type of thing I've discovered that a hit radio station like that has a life expectancy of about five years, Mm -hmm. the way it works, because somebody else comes along and improves it, changes it, or whatever have you. KOBY lasted maybe five years. KEWB lasted about five years. KYA came in and, and had its fling. And throughout all the various radio stations throughout the United States, they all had their five-year fling. Yeah. Now, I'm the only one that, that I know of who's ever said that. But I look back at all the radio stations, and I'm in touch with a, a ton of radio stations in Canada and, and other places. And the story always seems to be, well, it was AM. It wasn't the AM that made the difference. It was the, it was the formula, the format. Right. I mean, I, took, I, took, I, I consulted with radio stations clear across Australia, and did the same thing with all those radio stations. At the time, I didn't know that I was going to have trouble after five years, but then I wasn't involved with them. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you, at, at I'll tell you what, uh, you, you say five years, but I worked at a station that lasted quite a while here in New York, which was WMCA. MCA was different, yes. Yes, it, it broke that five-year rule. I mean, it was, it, it was a sensation. And WABC yeah. came along and competed against it, 
but the two of them were going neck and neck, but it wasn't like they were being replaced by something else. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, um, I guess one of the rare pleasures that I had in my life was winding up working at WMCA because it was a legendary yeah. radio station. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it, it probably was what, considering the size of New York City, yeah. it probably was a, a very, very special a special thing. Oh yeah. Oh no. I mean, I was working there with. Uh, well, it was the end of Murray the K's career. That was about his last yeah. New York station. Uh, yeah. But I was working with all the all the greats, you know. And I'm this yeah. this yeah. kid coming into town. I I was thrilled. It's absolutely thrilled. Um, what do you think? As you do, you listen to radio anymore? I listen to Sirius XM. Uh huh. I used to be on Sirius I have XM. Channel that I that I bother with. What's and that? I listen to it in the evenings because when I listen to it, I, I'm not competing. I'm no longer working <laughs> in radio. I'm just listening for what I want to listen to. Yeah. And what and, what, uh, cha what channel is that? Uh, I listen to channel 69. It's called Escape. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They play, the old, they, play, they play good music versions of older hits. Yeah. I was... I, yeah, go ahead. I listen to those constantly and, and kind of go back to some of the things that I like and enjoy, but I don't, I'm not working. Yeah. Yeah. Well, of course not. You, you, uh, I'm not working either. I got let go by Sirius XM after 10 years with them just about five mm -hmm. years ago, you know, but just, you well, I, I found that I, now in my studio, I'm a painter now and I've been painting by the way, I've been painting for, for but, 60 years. So, by the way, uh, I, I I looked at your stuff online, and yeah. it 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 took my breath away. I was amazed that you that you just didn't spend that doing that for all of your life. You no, know, I was I did as much of it as I could while I was uh, in radio. Yeah, but I was busy doing radio, so I was limited as to what I could do. Once I yeah. once I retired, then I went full bore into painting. Yeah, and I've been painting ever since. Uh, if if you had one, a major memory to take away from your career in broadcasting, is there a moment or a time that was that you would say was the time you you like to remember as being just a great moment for you? There, I would say there are two. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, I was uh, contacted by some people in Hawaii who knew about me, and because Hawaii was the United States, and they knew about me. And they were able to set up my uh, consulting in Australia. Mm -hmm. And I worked in Australia for uh, quite a number of years. That is, consulting and traveling back and forth. Right. And uh, I'm, I'm known in Australia as the one who brought uh, radio up to date. Uh, some, something like that. As the, I, I brought radio, popular music radio to Australia. Uh, and, and the other one is that I was in at a billboard conference and I was called by uh, the owner of radio station CHUM, Alan, uh, Alan uh, Rains again. At any rate, the, the owner asked if I'd have lunch with him when I did. Mm -hmm. And he said, we, we want to hire you. That was 1968. And they hired me to be the consultant for uh, not only Chum, but for their entire broadcasting group. And I had a two-year contract with them. That was It was a wonderful time. And I got to know Canada really, really well uh, after that. And and that, that's where you live now. Yeah, I've been here since ni late 1974. Did you be, ever become a citizen or you just... Uh... Yeah. Really? Yes, no. I'm also a citizen. I have dual citizenship. Gee, you got that great health service now. You, you have that. It, it, it is the best that anybody's ever seen. Yeah. I would, if I had stayed in the United States, I'd be dead. <laughs> well, I didn't. I wouldn't have been able to afford all the operations that I've had. Yeah. I had bad legs and uh, some clogged arteries, and it would have cost. Uh, yeah. Oh, at least five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Didn't, and that it didn't cost me anything. 
Yeah, well, our signal is kind of freezing up on us now, unfortunately, uh, but that's, uh, uh, that's the nature of Skype. Uh, but yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 Ted, I, I thank you so much for spending time with us. Uh, this is an absolute pleasure, and I just wanted to tell you and thank you for sending me in the right direction in this business. Well, if I had something good to, that I did for you, I'm, I'm most appreciative I had that opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Ted Randall. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. Okay, that was uh, that was Ted Randall. And um, oh, wait a minute. I gotta <laughs> gotta put myself on. See, I can't even know. How, I'm putting myself on. Uh, let me see here. Let me uh, let me go to the uh, let me open up the lines here on the Skype. Um, a little freezing at the end there, but I, uh, I just enjoyed it when I caught up with this guy because, as I say, uh, there are people in your life who influence what you do and what you become, and uh, he was a big influence, uh, and there he was, not knowing it, not realizing it. And I'm sure, I hope somebody comes up to me sometime and says, you were an influence on me, uh, and uh, I'm sure it wouldn't be Howard Stern because he'll never admit it, uh, but I, I, uh, you know, it would be if it happens to me, I'll be, I'll be delighted that I was an influence on somebody. Anyway, our, uh, in case you want to call, we use a thing called Skype. If you can negotiate it, give us a call. Oh look, I'm wearing my, I'm wearing my checkered pants tonight. Uh, so anyway, uh, our number, our, our Skype uh, call. Okay, if you want to call it, is. Um, Gabnet Live, G A B N E T L I V E. Uh, you just, if you have Skype, just go and type that in, and it'll come up with our thing, and you just call it, and then we will uh, we will talk to you. Okay. Um, also, I've done a few changes over at Gabnet.net. Uh, we now, on the on demand, have pictures of the various shows. I, I don't know if that's making it too cluttered, but let me know what you think of it. It's just. A, it's a little nuance that I suddenly realized I could do. Anyway, I'm waiting for people to call. It's Friday night, and um, I just saw Charlie Wallace came online, so he may be the first one that, uh, that calls tonight. Um, so we'll wait and see here. Oh, boy. Yeah. So I'm feeling a little better today than I was yesterday. I'm tired, but I'm still feeling better. My stomach is in better shape. Oh, here comes Josh Wheeler, ladies and gentlemen. Josh is the first one to uh, to show up here. As soon as he turns on his camera, I'll let you see him, okay? There we go. Okay, there's Josh right there. And here comes Charles Wallace. Uh, let me see here. Charlie probably will show up in the same place that he showed up before. Uh, yep, there he is. You see? Uh, there he is. Okay, so we have two of our people, and here comes Phil Meyer, and when I click on him, he'll probably go into the same place he was on last night, which is in the uh, third place. There we are. There's our, there's our beginning of our citizen panel, ladies and gentlemen. How are that you? That was a good interview. Huh? That was a good interview. I really liked him on The Odd Couple. Well, Ted Randall. <laughs> yeah, no, that was Tony Randall. Different Randall. So uh, 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 you enjoyed it, you say? Yeah, actually, I did. Yeah, you've heard it before. You heard it before, didn't yeah. you? When I ran yeah, it originally, yeah, I, I heard more of it this time. Yeah. Um, uh, do you guys have uh, have Charlie as a one panel here, half the page? It's really um, strange what what goes uh -huh. on here. No, no, yeah. I don't. No, he's, no. He's just like the other you yeah. and. Yeah. Uh, well, it doesn't Josh. matter. It, uh, I, I it, what, how I have the page here, folks, that you're seeing. <laughs> Uh, is of my own design, okay? And it looks perfect. And uh, if you use Skype, it's going to look a little weird to oh. you, okay? But give us a call anyway at uh, GabNet Live is the Skype uh, handle. Hello, Charlie. How are you this evening? Doing great. Yeah? I had a great week. You had a great week? Yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, I had the stomach problem yesterday. Can I tell yeah. you about something very personal? 
Uh, and uh, I, I went to the bathroom a lot, okay? Uh, I went to the bathroom a lot, and uh, I uh, created an a external hemorrhoid. Ooh. <laughs> now, I hear they go away after a while or something, you know. They, you know that I just, just put some ointment on there, and they'll eventually disappear. Let me see here. Uh, well, I guess I'm going to have to call yeah. Rob back uh, because hmm. he just called. And uh, I'll add him here and see if he, uh, he, if he picks up. He should have picked. He should have. We should there have gotten him. There he is. Okay, there we go. Let me put him in a spot here. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, Rob Alfano. Were you calling on a different line, Rob, than you usually use, or a different no. computer? No? No. No? Oh, well, it, it should have just automatically realized that you were calling, but it, it didn't, so, mm. you know, uh, what the hell, what the hell. Hello, Rob, we haven't heard from you all week long. You must have been busy, either that or you were watching the Yankees. Watching the Yankees and staying away from anything that has to do with the news. Yeah, I agree with you. I've gotten so sick of it. Uh, I've, I've gotten so sick of every time I turn on MSNBC, it's like they, they may as well call it just the uh, all Trump all the time. I mean, there's, there's nothing else on there. And there is other news, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. But you wouldn't know it. Looking at these news networks, you would not know there was other news. The only way you'd find it out is if you watch, like, the 630 news. It seems to cover everything all right wouldn't you say much better yeah i haven't I, I haven't turned on any of the news in weeks I just got to the point where i get burned out so, on it so you heard nothing's that, gonna change so you heard the then you heard that trump is dead yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't tease him like i still that. get head i still get headlines on my phone uh, I think he, that yeah he would also know, know that that wasn't true because otherwise there'd be huge amounts of cheering outside his yes. window Right. You know, people honking hey, their horns, partying. Yeah. How close are you to Virginia Beach? Uh, about four and a half hours. Oh, okay. Yeah, I so, go down there, and I have, you know, the, the city of Virginia Beach is one of my customers. I go down mm -hmm. there frequently. Yeah. yeah, you heard about the uh, shooting at the city offices? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, my that, God, another yeah. shooting? Yeah, yeah. another yeah. shooting. Uh, Eleven dead, six wounded. Yeah, how do you feel about that, Phil? Uh... I guess the guy went postal. Oh, geez. he was a long. You know, I don't know what the situation is, but uh, he was a long-term uh, city employee, mm -hmm. and uh, he, <laughs> he went into him. yeah. He, he went into the offices at the Virginia Beach uh, something, uh, and he randomly went through the floors, very similar to the California what, 101. What, what, what did he go through those floors with, Phil? Uh, I think rubber bands and a yo-yo, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it wouldn't have mattered. I mean, it no, would it have been have something matter. else. Oh, no, that, no, no, you're hypothesizing. The fact was, it was, and I think it, I, I just think it's time we we stop with this gun nonsense. You know, it's just well, time I'm, to stop. It. I don't, I don't agree with you. So, but that's you know, well, that's because, why well, America's then, America. The, the, okay, then come up with a solution. I don't need a solution. I say arm everybody, but that's my solution. Oh, great. You know, if those people weren't sitting ducks in a gun-free zone, this guy wouldn't have made it past the doorway. You don't think so. And you don't think there would be a if, if you armed everybody, you don't think that there would be just a lot of gunfire every which way, and, and innocent people would get hurt more because people have all these guns and they're just they're not trained and they would they fire oh, I didn't say it, it, didn't, it didn't work very trained. well it didn't work very well for Dodge City yeah, I, yeah. I didn't say that they should we started be that way we started, we started that, that way and it didn't yeah. work yeah they need to be trained we're going back and not oh you mean oh, so if we trained this guy he would have been able to kill maybe 13 14 Ooh. people right and then even well, the, the wackos will be well Well, trained. we don't know enough about uh, what this guy's deal was. You know, oh, okay. we don't know okay. if he's a disgruntled gabnet caller. You know, yeah. uh, there, just, there's no... Whatever he is. Common sense is gone in the world. Common, yeah. That's why I stopped watching the news. Yeah. Because common sense is gone in the world. You're absolutely right. Common sense is gone. It, it, up is down, left is right, 
white. It's, it's black. You know what it is? It's Superman's bizarro world. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. just everything. Do you hear just about so that work. country western song that uh, uh, was done by this guy uh, Rich? Uh, I, I forget his first name. Charlie. And uh, uh, no, uh, J- uh, Jim or John John Rich. Uh, it uh, he did it with uh, some of the people from Fox TV. It's called uh, "Stop Talking About Politics," and it's actually hit number one on the uh, country music. You know, uh, just chart. because just because I stop paying attention to the news and I stop talking about this stuff doesn't mean I don't think that that it that it, it, just because I stop talking about it that all this shit's going to get better, right? I, I'm just burying my hand in this my head in the sand. Yeah, I realize that we're going down the tubes and we're going down fast. Yeah. Yeah. Well. You know, everybody's entitled to their opinion. Well, you know, because yeah, if you, well, you, got, you, get, you, got, you have you an got opinion, four, they kill you. You got four opinions well, to your that, one that'll opinion. Well, that'll come soon. Yeah. You you got, got, that'll you, come soon here, where your opinion will get you in trouble. Yeah, That's yeah, on you, its you, way. We're on you, our way there. Alex, what yeah. do you think about uh, these companies like Netflix and Disney refusing to... Uh, film in Georgia because of Georgia's uh-huh. passing of well, an abortion to begin bill. with. To begin Good. with, you aren't stating it correctly. All right, you state it, and I have uh, another uh, little uh, ditty. Uh, oh, oh, I'm sure you do. But let me uh, let me uh, as answer your little question to begin with. They didn't say they weren't going to. What they said was, and let me also at the same time while I'm doing this because I'm patting my head and rubbing my stomach put Jeff in the in the mix here. Uh, but the point is that uh, um, the um, um, uh, what they said was is they are considering it, and one of the reasons they're considering it, and they're not saying it's a political decision, they're saying it's a business decision, is that the people who work there or go down there to work don't want to work there any longer. Correct. And that if enough of them don't want to work there, they feel there's no way they can continue to do business with Georgia. Well, I, I understand now that. that is basically very different from what you just said. All right, there's two there's two sides to so that. So say Number you were one, wrong. Say you were wrong. I wasn't wrong. Yes, you were. You were absolutely wrong. You were acting like they had. Made I'm never some, wrong. You were acting like they had made some political decision not to keep doing that in Georgia, and that's not what they said. Well, let me finish. Yeah. Now, if they're so upset over Georgia passing this law, how come uh, they will film in China? Uh, uh, they will film in this Miramar where uh, they just did a uh, major film. You're talking uh, about and, one film. Uh, You're talking about one film in China. Uh, there are some deals with some Chinese movie companies over there, but they're the guys making the films. This is yeah. Uh, let's say the Miramar one. I don't know. I don't know so the name Myanmar of the movie. Myanmar is probably the country. Myanmar. Right. Myanmar. Yeah. And the Myanmar. thing is, Mir- the thing Mir- is but near, you're talking about you're Miami. talking about one movie. Who's making that movie? What company's making <laughs> uh, okay, that movie? Okay. Well, what company's uh, making this that movie? country? What company is making that movie? Disney, I believe. It, I, you believe? I believe. Uh, you know, uh, hey, you no, know? I don't write this stuff. Well, down. no, because what you're doing is you're yelling and screaming about Disney. I haven't yelled and screamed about anything. Uh, Disney and Netflix are two of the companies that uh, were cited in that they've made certain movies uh, in 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 a couple of countries that you know kill people, uh, that kill gays, that. Uh, uh, you know, do a lot of things that they don't like, but in Georgia, they're going they're going to uh, protest or not want to. No, film they're there not protesting. Phil, I told you they're not protesting. Didn't you hear they're, me? They're not protesting. They are making not? a business decision because people who go down there as actors and as technicians and as makeup people and so on. If there are enough of them, according to Disney, that do not want to go down there, they will cease to make productions in Georgia because they won't be able to supply. And secondly, they feel that if they have some females who work down there and then they get pregnant, then somehow if they go anywhere else to go get an abortion, they can be arrested. So they don't want to be any part of that. They're watching out for their watching out. They're watching out for their work for Disney. The gays that work for Disney, if they go to Miramar... No, wait a minute. Or, You're saying, find me what company is making the movie in Miramar. 
uh, Myanmar or whatever. Okay. It is. Uh, go find it. The, go find it, Phil. Go one of the, Phil. One of the go, I won't listen to another up. word. Listen to me. I won't listen to another word you you're, have you're to say. You're talking until, over me. No, I I'm won't. You, no, you're talking over one me. The, no, Phil, one, I am not going program. to listen to another word from you till you find out what movie company is doing that production in Myanmar. Okay. Who who made Narcos? That was Netflix, right? Narcos. Yes. Yeah, whatever. Uh, that was Netflix. That's one of them. Uh, the other one was Disney, and I don't know the name of the Where movie. did you find this information? Just on TV tonight. No, 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 you wasn't on TV. Yeah, it was on Fox. Oh, it was on Fox. I see. What, do you mean everything Fox okay, says? Okay, okay, you're in, you're in the timeout box now so other people can talk. Okay. Everything that Fox says is a lie. All right. Yeah, yeah, it's close. You're very. That's the first thing you said. This right all night. Uh, yes. Uh, um, it, it, what do you think of that, uh, Rob? About the about the about Disney and Netflix. I'm. I I think they're making the bet. The only decision they could make. Yeah, I don't know enough about it. It's those kinds of things that I don't. I don't I haven't been paying attention to the news and I don't care about those things because they don't really matter. I mean, I I support them if they decide they don't want to do business with the state because they don't like the state's politics. I have no problem with that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, it, nothing wrong with it. Yeah. You if you know. don't want to do state business in a state, that's uh, Amazon decided they didn't want to do business with New York state, right? Right. So, now Hollywood doesn't want to do business with Georgia. Right. Well, it, yeah. Exactly. Whatever exactly. their reason is, it's a free country and still. And Phil's always in, always into, well, they don't want to make stuff there, then they have the right not to make stuff there. Yeah. That's what you normally would say, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> well, only when it suits the their purposes. Yeah. The, you know. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, Americana is going away. Freedoms that we had that we enjoyed, you know, the press and all that. It's all going away. It's all going away. It's all, little at a time, it's eroding. Sort of the way airplane seats got smaller. And smaller <laughs> yes, yes. And we got, got fatter. It, did, it didn't happen overnight. It happened over 10, 12, 15, 20 years. No, we got fatter. Look, airplane, <laughs> we may have gotten fatter, you're right. But those seats, those, those seats and have gotten and smaller. everything else has gotten smaller. They definitely And it's have. happened a little at a time where you go, uh, 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 you don't notice it, and then all of a sudden it's gone. And that's what's happening to America, the way we knew it, yeah. the way we were raised. Yeah. So. I miss the good, I miss the good old days. Uh, yeah, there's, Pat, uh, there's, uh, there's our uh, good friend uh, Tony uh, and his... Uh, would you put your whole head in the picture, Tony? I don't want to scare you out of the room. <laughs> no, I, no, what it'll do is if you move your head up more in there, it will see less of the wallpaper. And, and I, I think that wallpaper scares little children when they're watching it here. And I... She thinks it's all the rage, my mother. Huh? It was in years ago. She said, I try to talk to her casually just to see what she says, like play stupid. Yeah, and I says, Ma, we, Alex, this has got to be twenty years old. She thinks she doesn't remember that well, oh, but it's got, twenty years old. Believe me when I look at oh, it. Oh, people got that. That she had to have gotten that in the, like the maybe the fifties. Yeah, I mean, I, she thinks it's a minimum twenty years old. Well, I think she's wrong. I think it's minimum forty years old. What does that wallpaper look like to you, Rob? What's that? What does the wallpaper look like to you? It reminds you of my great grandmother's house. Yes, exactly. Yep. Yep. In Brooklyn. Yeah. Well, this is in oh, Queens. You're close. Well, that's what that reminds me of. <laughs> wow. wow. Only everybody spoke Italian. So. Uh, everybody. My mother. My she understands a little bit, but but she don't speak it fluently. I kind of wish I knew Italian a little more, but my grandmother who passed away years ago, she spoke both. It's funny, yeah. I don't I don't know how to speak it, but I rec the dialect, the Sicilian dialect, I recognize when I hear it. Yeah. Once in a while I hear it, you hear it in The Godfather, in the movie The Godfather. You also, I was on a subway one day when I was still living in New York, and I was sitting there, and all of a sudden I heard these two men talking. And I, I, I was staring at them, and they must have been wondering, what the hell are you staring at? And it was because it, it just it took me back to my childhood. You don't hear it anymore. And I, I had to say something to them. I was like, you guys speak in Sicilian, right? And they, 
I said, because I'm, pardon me for staring, but my family, I grew up with this language and I haven't heard it in 30 years and it just, wow. Let me, <laughs> let me catch this. Do you know what this means? Fanabla? Fanabla, yeah. I think it's fuck you. Uh, is it, I'm not sure if it's fuck you or not, but I, and I know it's a, it's an a Italian. Word, yes. Whenever I have to argue in the house, my grandmother would turn to Italian, so I wouldn't understand it. Like yes. if she was oh, my, my, my parents, when I was a kid, my parents um, would speak in Yiddish, so I wouldn't understand it. See, yeah. the they thing. tell the whole story in English, and then when they get to the part they don't want you to hear, they yeah. switch languages yeah. on you. And, and, and Alex in Yiddish, was Meshuggah crazy in the head? Yeah. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. it yeah, I remember crazy. my grandfather saying, he's Meshuggah. That's crazy in the head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Crazy, some crazy, uh, crazy in the head. I, I hear some noise in the background. Is that uh, Alex's silverware being moved around that uh, he lost on his uh, home housewarming <laughs> party? Funny. I'll send it to you later. <laughs> He'll never know that this post is gone. No, I would never take anything from anybody. Anyway, so you know, I mean, um, 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 so you're you're absolutely right, uh, uh, Rob. That you know, we're we're living in a in a country now that has no civility at all. And 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 it's so and, 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 and the the tone has been set by a certain individual. You yeah. know where I think this started. I think all of this started right around the time of the OJ trial oh, because, I because I think what it was the really polarizing time and people were on either side and I, I don't think anybody gave a shit what was right or wrong. You rooted for you. You had to be right regardless of what side you were on. And I was involved in it because I lived it every day because we covered the trial when I was at Court TV, right? So and so they were you were not gonna convince anybody and it was this divide, it really was. Rodney King and and OJ and all this nineteen ninety five. And that was to me the beginning of all of this divisiveness in this country. And it's just gotten worse and worse and worse over time. Uh, now, but now that, but, and now it Rob, doesn't matter. You, but Rob, now it doesn't matter. Rob, you're, you're, yeah. That was a racial divide at that point. I mean, but things still, were, things were being. Back, but, yeah, but, but Alex, it still yeah. goes back to the same thing of like, you can. I don't care if you're a Trump supporter. You don't care about anything that's in that Mueller report. You think it's all bullshit. And if you're not a Trump supporter, you you at, we're we're at complete odds. And there is is the same way that Trump uh, the way that OJ trial was. You were Trump. either you were either think you thought Trump uh, OJ was innocent or you thought he was guilty and there was anger in it. Just, let me put it. Th let me ask you. Let me ask you this question though: How many people do you feel? What percentage of the American public do you feel thought a OJ was innocent? That's a good question. Yeah. Tony, do you have the real glove? The one that would have okay, fit? Okay, I'm, I asked Rob a question. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't know. You know, it's funny because um, it was so polarizing, even in the newsroom at Court TV. Um, and it was, I think, I, don't, I can't give you a percentage. I have no idea. But uh, like I said, I, it doesn't matter. Whatever side you were on, you dug in. Mm -hmm. You dug in. It didn't matter what they pointed out. In I, 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 I don't know. The, I, I don't know that I dug in. What is, what is all that noise, Jeff? Jeff, are you making that noise? No. Oh. oh I, I think you were moving something and it made noise. That's what it was. Yeah. Well. Anyway, uh, I, um, I I can't say that I had an opinion either way. I I was one of these people that went. I just want to see what the what evidence they present. You know, but uh, then again, you weren't seeing everything. You know, in fact, you weren't seeing what the jury saw. Sometimes the jury was sent out, and the cameras were still rolling, and, right. and, and the that's jury and, in a trial. and the jury didn't see that part of it. That's so now right. you're making up your opinion based on what the jury hasn't seen. Now the jury comes back and makes their decision on what they've seen. I will tell you that I believed O.J. did it. Mm -hmm. But I also think that uh, I thought that O.J. got off because the police did such a bad job 
that well, they, they had to let him. Well, the, the, the line the somebody the used, the, the line that somebody used was that uh, the police uh, framed a guilty man. Yeah. I don't know that I buy it. I don't know that I, I mean, maybe, you know, I mean, the whole thing with Mark Furman and, and him being a racist and, and, and all that, they're saying that Furman planted the glove, right? We'll never know. But to me, uh, I felt like the, there wasn't a chain of custody with the evidence. And I, I watched this trial. I was there every day, right? I spent a lot of time in that, in that control room with this. And I, you could just say uh, they, the, the defense shot holes in the, the chain of custody. They had, they, they went into the house and they took a blanket out of the, Nicole's house and they put it over the body. Once you do that, you've contaminated the whole area with DNA from OJ, who has been in that house any number of times. Mm -hmm. Just and, and just the evidence itself, chain of custody. From the Asian guy, I can't remember his name. Oh, uh, I can't remember his name right now. It's escaping me. But that whole thing, you just like, you know what? He has to. They have to. This is a mistrial, not a mistrial. But I mean, they screwed up so badly that you had to let him go. Even though I thought, obviously, he killed her. It was just at least in my mind, he killed her. But I felt like he got his. He got what he should have gotten. You know, because they screwed up so bad. The police screwed up so bad. Uh, do you think that uh, that uh, maybe uh, the defense shouldn't have been that he was guilt, he was not guilty, but that he was driven insane by her actions towards him? You know, do you think he would he would have been able to make a case that way? No. Because I mean, I don't think she I don't think so. Because he was living a he was living a life. He had gotten on an airplane. He had a public. He had an appearance to it to go to. I was in Chicago or something like that. Yeah. Um, he was living his life. I don't think you can claim insanity with something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I don't know. I don't think so. Anyway, I just I think they did the right thing. They attacked the evidence. They attacked the way the police department did their work. And they did a bad job of it. Yeah. And I and again, I think, uh, you know, is I would say if, if you asked me back in the day, my answer would have been he's guilty. But because they screwed up so bad, you can't put this guy in prison because that it it would be it, it, it would just completely subvert our entire system for that to happen. You, hmm. you, you can't screw up like that because there are there might be a case where a guy looks like he did it, but he really didn't do it. Yeah. You know, you err on the side of caution. They screwed up. You can't put him you know in prison. Be but they got him with the civil trial. Yeah, what, Tony? You know, it be ironic. I guarantee you, when OJ passes away, if they let him donate his brain, I bet you he has that disease. I would. I would. Yes. I would doubt it. Wouldn't doubt it. But Could that? He okay, here, here's a good yeah, question for. He, he tracks, loses track of Yeah, time. that's a very, very, very good, good thought there, Tony. But I, I'll ask Rob. Rob, could he have used that as a defense today? Today he could. Today, yeah, today he could. Yeah. But again, you can't prove it until someone's dead. Yeah. They have to open up your brain. Yeah. Yeah. They have to, yeah. yeah. So they'd have to kill him to, to you know, show his innocence. Wow. Because they all have that same profile. They have flashes of rage. They say they lose track of time. They don't even remember what they do. Yeah. And it sounds like, oh, he's probably an innocent guy because he's probably insane now because of that disease. They just didn't know it. He probably just flaps out. Of you. you don't know what's going on. Yeah, it wasn't a big thing back in the nineties. No, nobody knew. No. It wasn't a big thing. We what do they call that? We don't hear much from him lately. Well, I don't. No, is he yeah. still doing time or no? No, no, he's, he's been. No, out of, he's out on bail. Not bail. Um, uh, he's out on probation. Uh, parole. parole. That's parole. Yeah. Well, that's good that he's out of trouble. At least, thank God. You would hope. Well, for now. Yeah, you're right, Alex. <laughs> yeah. time. He doesn't have a yeah, wife to kill. Easily played. Oh. Yeah. Um, I think. Well, if you think that's maybe the beginning point, you know, I think you might. You know, that's certainly a, a thought. Uh, I think I would have to say that if you want to use that as a beginning point, you still have to go back further, to like the Watts riots. Uh, the riots here in New York City. I mean, that, but the, those were all r racial questions that were being attended to. Um, I, 
but the thing about the, the difference the difference there and i was young with the watts riots so i don't remember but the way i see the the uh, oj trial was the same way with the two sides dug in and no one wanting to be nobody wanting to admit that they're wrong and regardless of what they hear evidence wise or see they're sticking with their guy that's what i mean i don't know if that happened with the watts thing and i, I wasn't trying to make a racial I, uh, I wasn't trying to make a, any kind of a racial connection between this whole Trump thing and that uh, I was thinking more in terms of people who were just, I have to be right. I say o, OJ's innocent and, you know, I never said he was innocent. I said that they screwed up on the trial and you can't put a guy in prison that way, but I felt like he yeah. did it. But there were definitely a lot of people who felt OJ was innocent. Josh, do you remember the OJ trial? I mean, well, who doesn't? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I remember it, but I didn't really pay attention. Yeah, what? very much. Uh, well, then you're uh, because well, most Americans were riveted to their television sets. Oh, Your I ratings was. over over court TV were yeah. were the same kind of ratings that uh, James Holhauser or whatever his name is is getting on Jeopardy. You know, I mean, they were in huge ratings. Uh, and yeah, and, and, and it was they, a crazy time. It, so you think, so that could be right, Alex, you could be right. So the end of the 60s, and you're probably right, started the dissension. Well, I, 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 I'm trying to think of where we got into this political divide, because OJ was not a political divide, Rob. Um, was it? I don't think so. But. I, I think it went along, uh, it went along class lines, mm -hmm. racial and class. Mm -hmm. Um, the funny thing was that he was supported by people in Watts and people in black neighborhoods and such, but he never identified with those people. Oh, he was never. He was always the whitest black guy in America. Yeah. You know. He was anything but that, but they identified with him because he was of the skin, the color of his skin. Yeah. It was an, was odd, it was an odd mix that he wound up being the, 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 uh, the, the, what, the, the lightning rod for racial dissension and you know separation and so on, that the the blacks were coming to his defense, and yet he had never done anything for the black community, unless you consider jumping over baggage to be helping the black community. <laughs> when, when, when it happened, when it happened, I. Uh, court Court TV was part owned by NBC, and we had Jack Ford and a couple of other people who were working at NBC at the same time that they were working at Court TV. And if you talk to any of them, none of them believed OJ was guilty. I, I mean, this is before the trial. This is right after the, mm -hmm. the slow speed chase. Yeah. They were all saying, there's no way this guy is one of the greatest guys in the world. He's, if you meet him in the halls, if you see him around, he's always got a smile and a handshake and he's a man's man. There's no way he did this. That was what people thought of O.J. He was so well loved by well, everybody. Well, I mean, he was a very he was so well loved that uh, that companies would pay him millions of dollars to be their spokesperson. Yeah. their spokesperson. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What do you think, Phil? Did you during that time? He's quiet. I can't believe it. Huh? Uh, well, he's, I, he, I was he's, he's, he's uh, I was definitely he, one of those people that were riveted to the uh, television. Matter of fact, I remember being in Dallas at a seminar, and we had the TV on. It was in 1995, I think. And uh, uh, that's uh, that day, the day that I was in that <laughs> seminar was the day that the verdict came down. And uh, it was... Uh, uh, you know, it was it was uh, uh, pretty unusual. And as Rob said, there was a lot of stuff going on, racial tension because of Rodney King and uh, the, the verdict that they uh, gave with that. So I think there was some backlash that I, wasn't an all black jury on uh, uh, on no, uh, no. OJ. No, it wasn't. Was it, was it all? No, uh, no that so. uh, that they didn't uh, convict. No, I. I no, or it was so. a majority of black. I don't even think it was well, a majority. Rob, what do you remember? Because you you covered it with court TV. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll tell you what you don't ever see, and uh, you know they were sticklers for it. Was with the jury, and we never saw a juror on camera. 
so oh, I yeah. don't know, <laughs> and I don't remember uh, the statistics of the jury. Yeah, but uh, no uh, jury uh, I've for on one Kennedy. reason or another, I think he had a uh, pro-black jury, uh, and I think the Rodney King thing, he had a pro-white jury, and so that made uh, for some uh, lines in the sand and some of the re reasons why uh, you know O.J. walked. Uh, because there was some backlash over Rodney King. But, uh, you know, I think also O.J. walked because his, uh, his attorneys uh, were better than no, the state's attorneys. No, I, I, think, I don't think it was that at all, Phil. I think that it was, as, as Rob put it, that it was some of the worst pol policemen and police work that could possibly be done and that they handed him... Well, uh, a lot of it was the establishment of Furman's use of the N word, uh, and that's but where that, that wasn't, came out of. Yeah, but that wasn't uh, the only. That was the wasn't yes, the only but, thing. But the defense attorneys were able to establish that uh, whether Furman is a bigot or not, and he probably isn't. Uh, he just had a big mouth. And, well, from uh, what I heard, were what I, from what that. I heard that he had said, and from the tapes, uh, he probably was. Yeah, there were a lot of tapes of him. Yeah, they had him yeah. on tape. Yeah, yeah, they had plenty and, of tapes. Uh, you know, they fucked it up. I think they took evidence out, uh, his trophies, things like that. It was like a free for all. Uh, they let every. Remember when they when everybody toured his house? Yeah. It was like a circus. They all yeah, toured exactly. his house. What the hell was that? Exactly. If you think about that, it was. I it was, and, and, and it, well, the whole thing was just, it was unbelievable. You just, every day you didn't know what you were going to see. Mm. Yeah. And the Bronco with uh, his uh, buddy, uh, the low speed chase on the freeway. AC Cal. Uh, you know, yeah, there was so much drama. And, uh, yeah, yeah, we were, we were riveted to our TVs. Do I right. think that OJ did it? We all had a side. We all had a side. Yeah. And you and and you did you change your mind? Did, uh, no, I, yeah, I, nobody I, changes their mind. No, nobody. I changes thought their OJ mind. did it. That's why I when I think about it, I think about where we are today and how, you know, uh, it doesn't matter what. It doesn't really matter what's in that report. It's a four hundred page report. Nobody has read. It. I mean, Americans haven't read it, right? Um, Charlie's reading it. Well, I've read, read book pages. Chart? Yeah, how many pages? Good. How many pages? Ten pages out of the four. Yeah, it's, well, a, it's a hard to read because it's I a mean, lot of crap. Right. Look, Nobody wants I, to read it, and yeah. and everybody has a side, and you don't really care to 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 be educated on both sides. Nobody really cares to be educated any more than they are. Everybody wants to hear what they want to hear. Everybody wants to believe what they want to believe, and. That's the same way it was with OJ, and that's what I mean by it. I, I, I'm not trying any racial pa parallels or anything like that. It's just people very early on drew lines in the sand, and and that was it. And that's where we are with Trump today. Everybody's drawn lines in the sand. If you believe it, if you believe in Trump, then you believe in Trump. I don't care what we find out about him. I don't care what we find out about him in the next six yeah. months or a year. Yeah. You're never going to believe it, Phil. And we're never going to believe that this man isn't isn't a corrupt, you know, mess. We're just never going to believe that. So, uh, and that and that's where we that's where we stand today. But uh, at what point did it become as uncivil as it has become? I don't think that during the O.J. trial it became terribly uncivil. It did for maybe a short time, but then we went back to whatever we were doing. We did not have Facebook and Twitter and yep, things right. like that. Yep. Uh, Facebook and Twitter is yep. nothing more than road rage. That's right. Uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, what, Bill's yeah. right. That, that's hey, where it came Bill's from. Right. Social media. Charlie, Charlie, what were you going to say? The internet. I was just going to point out that I, I think a lot of people in the black community did believe that O.J. was guilty, but they wanted him to get off anyway. Well, see, that's because, the same thing. That's what I'm saying. We had seen so many white people, especially during the civil rights era, who are definitely guilty of crimes and got off. It's true. And so right. we wanted, for one time, we wanted a black guy to get off for one time. Yeah. And so and we didn't care whether or not he was doing good things for the community or whatever. He was black. And we wanted a black guy to get off. Okay, now let me ask you this, Charlie. Let me murder. ask you this. You're black. Did you want him to get off? Um, yeah, because at first I thought 
There's no I mean, I've been a big football fan. I've actually seen O.J. Simpson play. He, he was playing for Southern Cal, and he came to play Northwestern when I was there. So I'd actually seen him play, and he was a great NFL player for, what, 11 years or something? He ran for 2,000 yards that year in 12 games. Yeah. And yeah. so Heard of. I didn't want to believe that, but as the, as the uh, evidence came in, and it, it became obvious that he really had done it. But even though he had done it, you know, part of me still wanted well, him to get off. Well, let's face it. Back back in that in those days, yeah. there was even more uh, false arrests and hassling of yeah. black people by police. Okay, uh, yeah. Phil can argue no, but it was back then. It was terrible. Okay. Uh, today it's it's moderate today compared to what it was back then. In in, in L.A. you had a chief. His name was Gates, I think. Yes, his name and, was Gates. Uh, yeah, there was uh, there was there's a lot of corruption in the L.A. Police Department. And, uh, and, yeah, but and, uh, you but, know, to, uh, but racism, maybe this maybe this brought down yeah, some of it. But racism you know? ran rampant in police departments in those days. And, the, and this was a reaction by the black community. To, they didn't care if O.J. Simpson was guilty right. or innocent. They cared that he got off. And if he had the money to do it with, then they said, good, that's just getting even, you know? And to me, this today is the same thing. Trump supporters don't care what Donald Trump does. They care about the, the conservative judges on the Supreme Court, and mm. they care about... The religious right who's getting their way and the abortion and all that, that's what they care about. Nothing else matters. That's why – that's to me why I see it as the same because nobody cares. Nobody cares. You, you, I can't find anybody who thinks that Donald Trump is a quality human being. He's the president of the United States. Everybody agrees that he's a piece of shit. Yeah. Well, except maybe for Phil. No, I, be, I I don't think Phil thinks that he's this amazing guy. He just likes what he's doing. And so the means, and I've said this before, the means don't justify the ends. It, it, the, the means the ends don't are, justify end, the ends. Or the ends don't, don't justify, justify the means. Right. It yeah. doesn't matter what he does. It doesn't matter how he lies. As long as the end game is, you know. Yeah. But now, you know, yeah. you're going to see, you know, you, Phil, you voted, you voted yourself a 25% cut in pay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jeff, uh, uh, Jeff had his hand up. I know I got a Not huge really. cut in pay. Yeah, yeah, really. Tariffs. Uh, yeah. Je Jeff? Oh, uh, Jeff. yeah, but I don't have to sell Chinese stuff. You have to buy it. You have to buy it. Uh, no, I don't. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yes, you do, and you don't even know when you're buying it. Yes, Jeff. Well, I, I, there's just there's a million manufacturers out there. Jeff had, there. You know? Jeff had his hands up. You know. Jeff had his hand up. Okay, Jeff. Thank you. I was thinking about these same problems in the time, and you know, I thought about Vietnam. There was a major, major change in our country. Uh, a whole bunch of people got killed president, brother, all kinds of black people got shot, killed, died for political reasons. Lynched. Lynched, whatever you want to call yeah. it. Uh, kids, remember there was two, two Jewish guys, young kids walking around down south? No, that, that was three of them. You mean uh, three three of them. Cheney, That's Schwerner, three and um, Goodman? Yeah. Yeah. And... At that point, I think, from my perspective, this whole Vietnam thing was a waste, and it was wrong. And and even the president quit. Yep. He realized it was wrong. You mean Lyndon Johnson? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. yeah. Well, Lyndon Johnson and quit because a big change he, in the I world. think I think his line was he heard. Um, he heard uh, uh, Walter Cronkite on the air one night and talking about how the war in Vietnam was bad because he had gone over there and he didn't like to give his opinion about stuff like that. But he ha said, I had to say it. I looked at it and this war was all wrong. It was not a war we could win. And so he said it and uh, right after that, uh, um, Lyndon Johnson said he wasn't gonna run for another term. 
And what he, what he said as a result was, if Walter Cronkite is against me, I just can't win. You know, uh, I'm on the wrong side of this issue. And that's why he didn't run. And Nixon then was handed the ball, the football, and the day he went into office, they had a way to get out of the war in Vietnam. There was a chance of a peace accord, and he didn't go for it. Uh, but he finally okay. went for the same plan four years later, after we lost another 20,000 men and women. Uh, so, you know, I mean, that was a real quagmire. That was really something. That divided this country like nothing. Uh, you think we're divided today. That was division, you know. I think the division today, though, now, I think it's more angry today, as, as like what Phil said, because of social media. Yeah. Yeah. It's just more angry today because, you know, you, you just can't get away from it. Hmm. Hmm. Can, you can't, just can't get away from it. Yeah, I right. do because I don't have social media, right. so I don't pay attention to it. I right. don't see it. I don't care, but I know it's there. Yeah. 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 Um, yes. Yes, Jeff. Well, I talked to somebody uh, tonight, and... Uh, the first thing she started talking about was, I can't stand Trump and what he's doing to this country. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, um, that, that's my feeling about it, you know, and that I, you know, I, I, you know, I love this country, or I have loved it. I don't love it right or wrong. I love it when it's right, and when it's wrong, I try to change it. Uh, but uh, I don't like where it's at today. I think it's very ugly. I think it's horrible. Did anybody see the All in the Family uh, reboot? Yeah. I mean, right. you, you, you watch it, and it's, it, it's so apropos for today, really. What's changed in 50 years? Well, um, it's nastier today. But what's really changed? The problems are the same. When you listen to Archie Bunker and Mike fight over things, they're fighting over things that we're fighting over today. Uh, I, you know, I, I would like to think that America has better angels, but that we're just—it's just not being brought out in us. It's, we're being um, uh, the media, for instance, as an example. It's not fake media. It is ginned up media. It's mm. media that's been ginned up so that these networks can make money. Now, you know, when news wasn't money and it was a public service, we didn't have the same problems about reporting. But today, I mean, you in the old days, you would have never seen CBS allow to go on on CBS, what goes on on MSNBC or Fox every single day, that kind right. of bias. Mm -hmm. And what I find incredibly difficult to understand. And the equal time rule. Well, is how MSNBC, for instance, can take a guy like Chuck Todd, who runs their, their flagship Sunday program, Meet the Press, yep. and, and allow him to go on MSNBC and be completely biased. You know, you don't want your news guys to be biased. You want them to be the moderator. And we don't, we, the only one we have that way is Lester Holt. You know, Lester Holt, you don't know. In fact, somebody said the other day to me, Lester Holt's a conservative. Mm -hmm. But you wouldn't know it watching him. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, want some, you want a happy story before we get yeah. back to Surus? Um, yeah. Well, this is kind of a happy story. I, I don't know if it's happy for the person who's, the people who are affected by it. Even though the Andy Griffith Show premiered on CBS almost 60 years ago, do you realize that was 60 years ago that it went on the air? A lawsuit has just been filed alleging the network used the show's iconic theme, you know, the one that, uh, uh, that whistles? Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, Andy and Opie walk near a lake, and Opie throws a rock. Well, they're using that Great. song without the permission of its creators, Earl Hagen and Herbert Spencer, who, by the way, are credited on the show as being composers of the music on the show. The multi-million dollar lawsuit was filed by the descendants of the song's creators. Besides being 
the network that originally televised the series, C CBS currently holds the distribution rights. Now, here's the reason. The plaintiffs allege the 1978 agreement signed between Viacom and the song's creators only covered distribution <laughs> platforms that were available at the time. Not VHS, not DVD, not Blu-ray, not on-demand streaming video. As such, the plaintiffs claim they are owed compensation for the television show's subsequent distribution. The report adds the lawsuit could signal a broader reaching battle ahead for TV classics, especially as on-demand platforms continue to expand. It's a good question, isn't it? It is. Wow. You know, yeah. uh, uh, and, and the question, of course, is here. What what what, is, what what you know? What's the uh, what's the um, uh, story with uh, um, uh, these this music, which was uh, um, uh, you know set up, uh, which was uh, okayed and signed for by the people that wrote it uh, back then, uh, as it pertains to now. Uh, so it's that old. It's not public domain. It's not. Uh, it's not public domain. No. Wow. No. Man, no. there's going to be a big lawsuit there. There's the, that's going to be a gold mine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jeff. Yeah. Pa uh, patents for music is 50 years. What? No, Didn't that no, change? No, I think I think it changed. Uh, it it is uh, patents for music now are I think the life of the composer, plus something like 20 or 30 years so that the relatives can make some money out of it. So well, Elvis has been gone since 1977. Yeah, but he didn't, so he didn't write all those songs. That's true. He didn't write any of those he songs. Wrote, he, I think maybe he wrote, did he write a song at all? Was he a writer at all? I don't think so. Yeah. No, those were all written by like Lieber and Stoller. And, right, right. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember who, who wrote some of the stuff on Sun. Presley may have been credited with some of the Sun stuff. Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, not today, you know. Uh, wow. So. But I don't know if that's a happy story, though, about the Andy Griffith show. Well. Because you know what's going to happen, don't you? What? They're going to strip what? that theme song off. I don't think they can do that. And, Why? and uh, because they already bought the DVDs. Uh, yeah, uh, how many people? How many people would complain about that? Does that? I mean, that's never stopped a legal battle. Well, mm -hmm. do you know the first nineteen episodes of Star Trek aren't in copyright? Yeah, I've heard. You've yeah, heard you say that. Yeah, I, that's where I didn't yeah. know it before. And, and how they get get you is with the music because they they do own the music rights. So if you if you, if you show it. Uh, you got music rights there, you know. Are you bored, Phil? Huh? Are you bored? <laughs> uh, I have a fan on, and I'm trying not to. It's very hot in here for some reason, and uh, uh, so I'm not using the uh, earplugs. So I have the speakers on, and uh, I'm just relaxed, sitting back, listening to you guys uh, in a no-Trump zone. <laughs> We're not even talking about Trump. We're talking about theme it's songs. It's a no Trump zone. That's why yeah. you're not talking about Trump. It's a no yeah. Trump zone. Can you yeah. hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Ray. Uh, okay, thanks. Yeah. I have a different mic. I just want to check. Okay. Oh, well, I, I, <laughs> yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, but anyway, so I thought I would mention that story because uh, it could affect a lot of other music, uh, you know. Um, oh, I do have the story here about Netflix, and it says they have at least five projects currently filming in Georgia. A lot of stuff, if you look closely at the end yeah. credits of shows, a lot of shows uh, are, uh, are doing um, their, sh their shows in Georgia. Georgia has been very good at... Uh, compensating them, giving them tax benefits and so on for bringing stuff into the state. And I see a lot of shows with that Georgia peach on it now, you know, at the end. Not just Netflix. Um, and there's several other companies that are, are, are rejecting them. Um, but they say that they would rethink their entire investment in Georgia if the legislation known as the heartbeat bill were to come state law. The bill 
among the several that have passed in state legislatures in recent weeks would outlaw most abortions after fetal heartbeat is detected, usually as early as six weeks, which sometimes is before a woman knows she's pregnant. Uh, the bill, anyway, in a statement, uh, Netflix said, we have many women working productions in Georgia whose rights, along with millions of others, will be severely restricted by this, this law. It's why we will work with the ACLU and others to fight it in court. Given the legislation has not yet been implemented, we'll continue to film there, while also supporting partners and artists who choose not to. Should it ever come to into effect, we'll have to rethink our entire investment in Georgia. Okay? So that's the way it was, Phil. Uh, uh, so I thought I would uh, just iterate. And, and then the, the Disney statement was a little more oblique in which it said that it, it intimated that uh, they felt that their workers who were in Georgia would probably not want to work under those conditions. And so they would have to honor them and, and honor the fact that they wouldn't be able to get people to work in Georgia. So, you know, that's their way. They, they, Disney never made a political statement about it like Netflix did. Yeah, well, if that's the case, I and many others have the right to stop buying Netflix. And, you know, if they decide to protest, and you say it's not a protest, but God damn it, it is, uh, uh, Georgia. It's their right to do business with people they yeah. feel they want to do it's business with. Other American Netflix, thank you very much. You know, and I'll go elsewhere. Hmm. Okay. Well, I, I can hardly right. wait to see you quit Netflix when this happens. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't think you will. I quit Showtime. There was nothing to watch. Well, because there was nothing to watch. <laughs> yeah. A lot of good shows on Netflix. What do you think, um, uh, Josh, about about uh, these companies saying they're they're not they may not do, they may not do business? I mean, it doesn't matter to me. I, I don't know why everyone acts like it's a big deal, really. I mean, I don't know why. I mean, he's allowed to be, but I'm just saying I, I, I don't know why Phil would be upset about that. I mean, that's like a, I don't know, it's just like a, a Fox News reaction. I mean, I read that headline, and I just, you know, then I go read the next headline. But certain people read that, I guess, and get upset. I mean, they can do... Whatever they want, I guess. It doesn't matter to me. And then if you don't like that particular company for whatever reason, as trivial as it may be to me, if it's important to you and you don't like them, then don't yeah. use them, who, I guess. Who, That's who, okay. Who is, that, who is that hamburger chain that got into trouble a couple of years ago? Was it hamburgers or was it Chick-fil-A? Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A. That was it. So uh, I, won't, I don't eat there. Uh, um, I haven't eaten there since. Phil is frozen. I don't know if we lost him or not. Are you there, Phil? We lost him. Yeah, it looks like we lost him. Yeah, yeah. it looks like we lost him. Hmm. Um, uh, Chick-fil-A, um, uh, uh, you know, would I stop g going to Chick-fil-A? Absolutely. I did. And I have that right. So why doesn't, yeah. why doesn't Netflix have the same right not to do business in the state of... Uh, of um, uh, Confusion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Georgia, Alabama. Right, right. So I mean, I I don't uh, I don't know why uh, anybody yeah. would be upset. I mean, it's just like a uh, I don't know how to explain it, but it's just like I mean, people just kind of think that well, this bothers me, and I'm upset that it doesn't bother you. Yeah, that's like where I start having problems. It's like, oh, what are you doing tomorrow? Oh, I'm watching, you know, the football games, the NFL. Oh, you, I can't believe you. How can you watch that shit? They just, they just condone violence and, and it's like, get the fuck away from. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's my fucking house. It's my fucking money. <laughs> Shut up. Get away from. I mean, that's that's. But it's just like you get reactions. Like it's like it bothers me. So it should bother you too, and it's just like I don't know. I, I like to think I'm good about not 
being that way or caring. It's like if someone were to say something to me like that and I think, you know, that that's stupid, I, I just say that in my head. I don't tell them that, but some people just, you know, <laughs> maybe I'm shy. I don't know. But, you yeah. know, they just, they'll just fucking come out. It's like I can do that because I'm allowed, because I'm fucking grown up and I have a job and I make my own money, you know. I mean, well, that's I mean, how, because I, mean, I can make my own decisions. But also, I mean, it uh, uh, it is a situation in which uh, 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 everybody has the right to do business with people they want to do business with and not to do business with people they don't want to do business with. Right, right. You know, and um, uh, that's, a, that's a, a, a major sticking point here. Uh, and I, yeah. you know, uh, I, 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 I certainly, you know, what, what, what's going on okay. here? Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Well, I don't I'll know. Never. Either Phil hung up on us because he was mad or he got... No, nah, he, he was having network problems. You could tell he was breaking up. Yeah. 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 Uh, so uh, I don't know what to do with his square. I can uh, I can take it and um, uh, make it disappear. Let me see here. Uh, by going, what, what which is he number three? I can just do that, and uh, uh, we get. Uh, oh boy, here we go. So there we go. So we got rid of him for the time being until we hear from him. Although I can move somebody else into that place uh, so that we don't have a problem. Well, here comes Phil again. Okay. All right. Yeah, he, it, it, obviously, obviously, Phil had some kind of um, uh, problem. Were you having a problem with your, uh, your, your connection, Phil? No, the breaker popped. The, oh, really? Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, I had a, you know, figure it out which which one it was dark and, yeah uh, yeah yeah well yeah yeah, yeah. I, I no I, it was because i was protesting the netflix thing so they, they, <laughs> yeah. they got me back yeah. here no what we were saying is is that if you don't want to do business to some place you know like you don't if you don't agree with netflix you're not going to do business with them because of their decision but yeah. the point is that netflix has the same kind of right you have that if they don't want to do business with people that they are, are making decisions that they don't agree with and they can take their business somewhere else, they have the this right is to new. do that. This is new. It, it was used to be that uh, businesses uh, protesting uh, uh, their dis uh, decisions, uh, did, it didn't happen. This, this is fairly no, but new you don't, you, but businesses you know, you don't understand. This, this is not different. What this is, is this is a company making a decision based upon their employees and the welfare of their employees. I mean, realize that Disney, if they, let's say, are making the next uh, Captain Marvel movie in Georgia, as they did the last one, uh, 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 has women working, that all of yeah. a sudden a woman gets pregnant, and now she can't get an abortion so maybe she goes to another state to get it, and now she comes back to work in Georgia, and they arrest her. They have to watch out for women. They have to watch out for their own employees' welfare. Well, you know, this is a fairly new uh, look on things because Disney was a pretty conservative company, and uh, since when? Uh, yeah, under under Disney. Well, that, no, that uh, was Roy years and, ago. No, uh, he was a he was a fervent anti-communist. Uh, but Disney also had a liberal side to him as well, believe it or not. Yes, uh, uh, Ray. Well, you know, uh, up until, I'm not sure what year it was, but the Republican Party was for uh, a woman's right to choose yeah. more so than the Democratic Party. And um, also, Phil, uh, wasn't it the, uh, the conservative Supreme Court that said that a company is equal to a person? Yes, Okay, so it doesn't necessarily like mean person. I agree with it, you know, and, and it also, oh. I'm just saying mm. that it has changed. That the, the, so convenient. Uh, well, it's the, the, no, I mean, it's like you're always like whatever, like it's the whole, it's, it's years like, ago, you're like, you're like Fox News, it's, you're like yeah. listening to Fox News. 
Today. You, well, that's maybe where I get my stuff from. But okay. years years ago, uh, you didn't have this happening. And all I'm doing is making a comment on that there has been a change, and now businesses are, uh, yeah, well, they're they're pushing their uh, whatever agenda that the uh, heads of that business want to push, have, whether have it's they always done that? Yeah, but We're not talking no. agenda here, Phil. No. Phil, we're not talking agenda. They here. said it's because their employees they might say not want to work there. Of, and... It's because of their employees. They also find that if they their employees don't want to work there, and they can't get employees to work there. Then they can't do business there. This is simple as that. Yeah. Well, that works. I think it's because most of the employees in, in in Hollywood now are really liberal, and they know that. So they're just thinking ahead. And if people don't want to go there to work, they're going to be in big trouble. If they try because to they they don't hire people yeah. from from Georgia mostly to work. They 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 bring people in from Los yeah. Angeles. Yep. Um, and uh, most no, of the has a tremendous, uh, tremendous amount of film business. Yeah, they do, but they're telling you they bring people in from Los Angeles just like they do in San Francisco and every other market. They don't hire, for the most part, I maybe mean, for like driving jobs and stuff, they'll get people from Georgia. But yeah. for the actual production of, of the movie or the TV show, it's all going to be L.A. people. And that's and, that's and the, the reason when they've been going to Georgia, I mean, a lot of times they say Georgia on the end of it, like you know this was uh, uh, Georgia made or whatever, and the film may have been shot in Louisiana, but the thing is that Georgia has tax incentives, and so they do a lot of the production there, or they base they do use that as the home base, and they've gotten a lot of business. They in fact you used to be you used to go to Canada to do it cheaply, mm -hmm. and now you go to Georgia to do it cheaply. Um, no, no unions? Huh? Or, I, well, I would imagine it, would, it, no, it, has it wouldn't matter do, whether it was union it, or it not. It has nothing to do with unions. It has to do with tax incentives. New York gets a lot of business lately because when a production comes into New York and wants to do a, a movie here, this city pays them a certain amount of money or gives them tax incentives to, to do the production here. That's why we have the Made in NYC thing that they... They put at the end of shows. Gotham was done here. Quite a few shows were done here last year. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's the reason that uh, that exists. Uh, and uh, so, it, yeah. Well, I was just gonna say. So, what's the difference then? I mean, I'm just asking the question. What's the difference between Netflix saying we don't like you know this piece of legislation? Therefore, we're not going to do business with this entity or, you know, this state. And, you know, to pull a name out of thin air, J.P. Morgan Chase spending a bazillion dollars, you know, to 365 days of the year try to get laws made that are in their favor. Or Citibank or any of the, I mean, what's, big businesses and small businesses, but especially big alike, have always asked for favorable legisl legislation and have made their opinions known in that way and their reactions known in that way. Yeah. I mean, and to be fair, you know, unions have, have said, you know, we don't like this legislator or that, don't vote for this guy, and we'll spend our money trying not to get this. So I'm just saying, what's the difference? You know, I mean, you know, I was just saying Phil's acting like this just happened. Well, I, I, would I just don't think that I, it did. I, I think would, it's always happened. I would ask Phil another question, and that question is, knowing how you feel about things, uh, if you can do it, do you buy uh, anything from China? Or would you, if you found something was made in China, decide to boycott China because you don't like what they're doing to the United States, in your opinion? Uh I I offer what's available. The no, Chinese I'm, no, I'm not goods asking with the you. I'm, I'm not asking you about it, that. I, I'm, I'm not I'm asking you about I'm, the tariffs. I'm not asking you about that, Phil. I'm talking about you what? personally. Would you buy products from China if if you if knew? If I that have a choice, China? I would rather buy the uh, American-made or non-China-made uh, product. Okay, and so therefore you're boycotting China, much like Disney is planning to boycott or Netflix is planning to boycott yeah, Georgia. Yeah, but I'm an individual. 
What's the difference? What, what, what's There's the a difference? big difference. When what when is the difference? And, no, and, and by the way, that I'm not cor- that cor- following that there's any difference. Let, because let people, know. there are many people that work for Netflix and work for Disney that don't agree with the uh, with the uh, their stance on abortion, and uh, therefore those people are not being fairly represented. You know, if if you believe that abortion is wrong, wait a minute, and, Phil, Phil, and, Phil, Phil, what, when when did the corporation uh, suddenly, number one, release its personhood, which you're denying here, and secondly, when uh, are are you making the decision that a company cannot make a decision and that the employees have any say so in that business decision? Well, for instance, Google. Uh, had uh, deter- the, decided that they were going to get out of certain technology because the employees felt that it aided the war effort. Uh, you know, uh, what's happening is uh, there are people that uh, believe in the war effort uh, that work at Google, but they're being silenced because those other people don't believe that they should build anything that aids the war effort. And in this case... I, I don't even uh, get what you're trying to say, Phil. All what I'm, I'm trying, saying is I'm trying to say to you sides, is you have, the, you the have company... the right to not buy something from China, okay? Right. And and Google, I mean uh, Google, Netflix has the right not to make films in Georgia. That's fine, and I have the right not to pay Netflix yeah, and, and, to. And, and I'm sure if you cancel tomorrow, they're going to hurt like crazy. Well, but you again, know, there's I'm a lot saying... more of me than you uh, think. Well, but again, I'm just saying, what's the difference? I'm sure that. From the mid-level executive on up at Charles Schwab or J.P. Morgan Chase, they love tax laws the way they are. And for all the people who, you know, just sell the stuff and make 80000 bucks a year, or for the people who are actually company employees and not contractors who clean the offices, they probably don't like tax laws the way they are. Yet the company that they work for is using company money to lobby for the tax laws that only benefit the mid-level executive and all up. So what's the difference? I mean, so that's, that's what your, I'm saying. What's the difference? Your theory is, Josh, your theory is life isn't fair. And, no, and I not. didn't say that. I said, what's the difference? I didn't say you didn't say what it. What you're complaining about and that. There's well, no difference. I know that life's not fair, and I, I can uh, ju- uh, put my money where I want it to go. That's and, true. And so and can Netflix. if I feel strongly enough about abortion which I don't, but if I did feel strongly enough about it uh, and I didn't want to support their stance, I don't have to do business with them. That's right. I'm not denying that. Yeah, that's. Uh, but the, the companies have the same decision. They can make the same decision. Sure they can. I, I just observed that, you know, in the last several years, it's changed. You know, I don't know that the, it's changed so much. I think what's happened is the divisiveness in this country is forcing all this crazy... Yeah. Where 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 on opposite ends, no one is in the middle anymore. It's almost so like you're seeing it more. I don't think it's changed. I mean, I I have no reason to go there right now, but I don't think that uh, I would probably go to Georgia for any reason, knowing the way they are right now. Um, you you got to remember though, uh, it just uh, Turner still has large investments in uh, in Atlanta, don't they? Do they still have they yeah. still have CNN down there, think, don't they? Yeah, but I think uh, oh, Turner you mean Turner Broadcasting? Well, not, yeah. not Turner himself. Well, it's CNN. You, you know. know what it is? Can I say something? Sure. You know, you know it's strange too. It's almost like now I'm just gonna bring like I was watching a movie where uh, they were they were discussing movies with directors and they had Tarantino on and they were asking him a question and the lady goes. How come you didn't give more lines to the female actresses? It's almost like they, these people want to look for like, like a problem. Like you know, does do you well, have an issue? One of the reasons it seems is, like these people what, have too much power. What, what, one it's of the, just a movie. One of the reasons is the name of the picture was Inglorious Bastards. No, uh, it was uh, actually the newer film though, Alex, that he's doing. They were, it was at Cons, and I was watching the thing on one of these channels, and they had the interviews. So I was watching a little bit. It's almost like I know it's a free country; they can ask whatever they want. But it almost looks like in today's society, does the press try to look for an issue where it doesn't exist to make a story that's not there? Oh, well, they do that. Yes, Phil. You know, Glenn Close came out uh, the other day uh, talking about uh, the Me Too movement and that um, this uh, toxic masculinity. 
uh, and uh, you know that it's being over overdone, uh, and uh, and maybe that's the same thing that's going on. You know, the, if you look at, I think, go ahead. Well, did, I, uh, I, was gonna, I was going to I was going to build on what you, what what um, what Tony said, and I said it at the last time I was on. I think I'm sick and tired of hearing things like America's yeah. ready for a gay president. America's ready for a pe president who could do the job. Who gives a fuck what? Exactly. It is? Yeah. I'm sick of all this crap. Yeah, who gives a rat's ass? Yes, what the person uh, is. Right. You know that we all, we've already had a gay president. I forget his name, but there was a president who whose companion was a man and lived was it with Lincoln? him. In the white... No. No, no. Before no. like, uh, the hell was his I, name? I, I, yeah, but he was a he was gay. He was he was our only non-married president. Yeah, yeah and he had really. a companion who was a man, and pretty much everybody knew that they had a yeah. thing going on. Uh, it didn't really it wasn't matter. Wasn't Polk, to right? It wasn't no, Polk. I'll no, look it, it up. I can't remember who it was, but it wouldn't. It, we've already had a gay president, is my point. Uh, so. I just don't remember his name. Not that it really matters that much, but uh, well, I don't think we. You know, I I I think that we certainly uh, um, it, it, we certainly have the right to ask that question, but really the question is, what, when are we going to get a really good president? You know, yeah, exactly. uh, I mean, um, I don't care. I don't care. and, and uh, I think that uh, I, I think we've got a real problem when we start saying, uh, well, we need a gay president or we need a, right. uh, we need a you know, Hispanic yeah. president or whatever. No, we just need a good president, you know. And I mean, okay. I'm I, I, I have to admit, I'm tired of old white guys, you know, I'm really tired of old white guys being president, but. Uh, so that's why Obama was refreshing. Uh, I have. To, oh, sorry. Yeah, it was I have James theory, Buchanan. Alex. James Buchanan was the one. Yeah, James, so, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know yeah. how you're gonna have a good president when you dis when you don't have any of these parties anymore. No more Democrats. No more Republicans. No more everybody just following party lines. Everybody's every man for himself. Well, I don't think there's anything wrong with parties, but I do think that the people who just follow the line, Tony. Uh, uh, well, that's the problem. Like of course, that's the, the problem is the, the, the dogma that exists within these parties. You know, yeah. I remember a time when I was a kid where you liked a certain Republican because he was a liberal Republican. Yes, there was yeah. such a thing as a liberal Republican. Uh, McCain then. was a liberal Republican. I like right. McCain, now that okay. you think about it. I thought he was a um, decent guy. Um, I happened to like in his time, I happened to like... Uh, after the fact, once I started looking at him a little more uh, honestly, I happened to like Goldwater. Yeah, I thought he was. I How thought about, he was uh, made... Lieberman, uh, who was a Democrat. Uh, I, I don't like Lieberman at all. But that's uh, no. you know, I and I've interviewed the man, and I just I thought he was. Uh, uh, I I thought he was a very conflicted human being about his politics. Yeah, he know? was. You know, uh, and uh, I just don't know that I can. Uh, side with somebody that conflicted about his politics. You mean somebody that can cross the aisle and no, just no, do no, the right no, thing? No, no, no. No, he, no he, that's not what he did. No. He was a very conservative Democrat. Yes. Now, when I said there were liberal Republicans, I didn't say very liberal Republicans. And I don't think I would say very uh, conservative Democrat, because if you're a very conservative Democrat, then go over to the cons party that is conservative, you know, and caucus with them. Uh, that's the problem, okay? Uh, and uh, all I'm saying is uh, politics, if people cross the aisle all the time. You didn't know how certain bills were going to come out because people were working at it together. But they don't anymore. Yeah, Reagan and Tip O'Neill, for instance. Yeah, I mean, you sit, yeah. they sit around today and they just say, this is where I am and I'm not moving. I'm not budging. I mean... How the I'm going to say this, Phil, and this is going to drive you crazy, okay? But how any of these fucking Republicans, half of them, are decent people, uh, decent Republicans? How they can just absolutely excuse everything that Trump does and make an excuse and and be in lockstep with excuses is beyond me. I think it's undignified. I think that uh, the reason they can do it is that they don't believe the media 
that is uh, saying bullshit. Uh, all the bullshit, negative stuff. Phil. Bullshit. And uh, they Bullshit. look at the Bullshit. things that no. he's doing, whether it's can working they on the look border. At him, can they the, look at him and look at the, the stuff the deal he with says China. and look at the stuff he does and honestly feel that he is a decent enough human being to side with him on everything? I mean, whatever he does. He doesn't have does. to be a decent human being to do the yes, job. Yes, he does. That's there were plenty yes, of people. Does. Yes, he does, Phil. That's an interesting well, point, Phil. That's a very interesting point. And that's where I think Democrats and Republicans or conservatives and liberals part ways because we believe that he does need to be a decent person and that he shouldn't lie and that he shouldn't be dishonest and that he should be transparent. Like he How do you trust somebody who, who's lying all the time? Would well, you how say do you trust what they say? Yeah. How do our allies trust what he and says? And also, let me let me let me bring does. let me bring something else. Let me bring. But he does everything on a whim. Let me bring something yeah, else up his, here. That's is that process. the president? Said, yeah, but that's not a process. Okay, let me finish. Yeah. Let me finish. Chaos. Uh, when you have a president, one of the things that he does is he sets the tone for the country. He sets the tone for the, for the discourse. He sets the tone for the morality. He said, so whatever tone he sets is the way the country is going. This man doesn't set any positive moral tone for this country. There is nothing he does that engenders that. And as the president of the United States, that's one of his duties, believe it or not. I believe that he's standing up to uh, no. uh, the tyrants uh, in, in no. China that are at war with us, and they're trying to steal our technology, and they want to take you, you, over. Go ahead. You can go believe that. Go right, right ahead and believe that. Go right ahead and believe that. You know, And I, keep you know, living in the I, dark. Yes, uh, uh, Rob. By the way, next time you do the show, Rob, uh, uh, don't have that light in back of you because every time you move your head, you either get dim or lighter. <laughs> so I just thought I'd mention that. Rob, it's time just, you go to Home Depot and you get a couple of lights and Alexa, you light yourself up. Turn off the living room. Oh, you got it working. Oh, ah. there we go. There, you we can barely things. see you now. But I, <laughs> I see him. He's fine. But it's better, you know. Um, what were you saying, Rob? You were saying something there. I don't remember. I, I, yeah, Ray, I know Ray had raised with, uh, Yes, Ray. With Trump. Uh, I mean, right. I, I don't believe Trump is a decent person, but also his policies, he doesn't make plans. He just does things on a whim. Um, and even, he apparently he even befuddles his own staff, and they have to go running around trying to figure out what the hell's going on. So, I mean, not only is he not a decent person, but he... He doesn't really know what he's doing uh, economically. He doesn't even understand basic economics. You mean like the 3.2% growth that we have now? That's about the only thing you can point to, <laughs> Phil, and that isn't but, even really a growth. Have you seen the, the stock market? Also, have you seen the, the have you seen the stock that, market in the last couple of weeks? Well, yeah, yeah, it's gone down 300 points yesterday because of the Mexico. No, it's gone down uh, more than 300 thing. points in total. Yeah. You know, uh, what's he, what see, he's doing he, see, with the tariffs. He completely tariffs. ignores that. Our, completely our ignores Congress that. Just ignore is not that. going to let him Phil just get ignored that. Through. Phil no, just ignores that. No, our, our Congress is not going to let him <laughs> get anything through. So the only way that he can manipulate uh, what's going on, for instance, at the border and what's going on with China is to use tariffs. And, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Tony, what do you think of tariffs? I actually like the tariffs. Really? But I have to say, I'm. I'm you like? Do you like paying? Pay, I do paying? like the tariffs. Do you like? like why? Do you like paying for You're it? You're going to pay. A tariff is on you. It's not on them. I'm going to tell You're you. I'm going to tell them. you why I like it. All right. You know Could why we... I like it? I think because let's. I'm going to use more. We've got a really my dicey. Hold on. Hold on, a hold on a second. Your connection. Hold on a second. We got a very. Like the place oh, I is. work at. Yeah. We got a very dicey Skype tonight for some reason. Everybody's. Not exactly right? as clear uh, as they normally are. I, I I like the idea of the tariffs. Oh really? 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 Because you know you, you do know a twenty five percent tariff comes out of your pocket. I I can't hear you. Yeah, his internet's all screwed. 
screwed up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't understand why people like these tariffs. You're gonna, we're gonna pay for it. Right. Yeah. That's why I said to Phil, you voted for a 25 percent cut in your salary. Uh, no, because but you know what? Can I? No, can I say wait, one wait, 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 thing? Tony, Tony. Like I, the I asked I you, I asked you a question. Seventy-five percent of stuff from China, and never they raised the price for. Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. They raised the price. Tony, oh, check your connection. Check your check, internet, check your internet connection. Uh, we're losing you. Yeah, let me check my connection. Yeah. All right. Yeah. My brother's company just raised by 25% the cost of all of their products. Yeah. But nice. it didn't go up 25%. It went up 10 and then 15. That's uh, 25%, percent they, they, they raised yeah, so it by 25%, and those prices will never come back down. Those, right. What they will do is they'll wait until they have to raise it again. So I remember so studying. Raise, prices aren't going to go back Some companies down. will raise the price of the American goods to offset the benefits of the tariffs on the Chinese goods. Uh, Shaw Industries, which is owned by Berkshire Hathaway, uh, is a company I, dealt, I deal with. And uh, that's what they did. And I wasn't happy about it. They don't seem to be raising the American products on this 15% raise. They did it with the 10 uh, but uh, they don't seem to be doing it with the 15 All I'm yet. saying is is that a tariff is a tariff on us. It's not a tariff on them. Maybe it'll encourage us not to buy as much of those products as right. we would. But the fact is we're probably going to buy them. We're just going to buy less of them. And the right. fact is that they will still be making the money off of those products. The problem also with the Chinese yeah. is that they, they manipulate the looking, currency. I am looking for an air conditioner. Right now, I need an I, air conditioner for this room. You should have bought it a couple of months ago. Yeah, uh, you cannot yeah. buy an air conditioner that hasn't gone up 25%. Okay? Uh, you know, there's got to be some because, that are made in Korea. Uh, 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 very few. LG. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's Korean, right? And I'm sure they, they've raised the uh, tariff on that, too. The so trouble is, is the, the trouble with Trump. Uh, the trouble with Trump is, but basically, that he knows nothing about business. Right. He is not a good businessman. He is a terrible businessman. Always was and continues to be. And he applies that same terrible uh, business sense to this country now that he that he uh, that he did with his own company. You know. So don't vote for him. I don't plan to. You know, but some dopes in this country just might, like you, Phil. Yeah. You know, and uh, uh, air conditioners are made in the I USA. Uh, yeah. Okay. I wish they would just get what, rid of this damn electoral college. What air conditioners are made in the USA? Okay, Home Depot has one <laughs> called MIDI Easy Control, 6,000 BTUs for 199 yeah. uh, cold, cold Front. As a, uh, I think, see what air conditioners are made in the USA. Yeah, this is a uh, cold front 8,000 uh, is $366. Mm -hmm. uh, there's something else that looks like it fits over a door. So, oh, that's 1,500. Uh, 469 for 12,000 BTUs. Uh, a cold front. And they're, uh, but Home Depot has the uh, 6,000 BTU, which is probably what you need for 199. Yeah. And, uh, and are you didn't sure? you say you had 5,000 BTUs and it's just at the edge of... Uh, yeah, I figure I can, put, I, can do, I can do six and not have a problem. All right. Well, Home Depot, and I think they deliver if it's over a certain price. Yeah. Uh, it's called uh, Midea, M-I-D-E-A, Easy Cool. Uh, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get one from China because I like the Chinese. I went <laughs> yeah. to China and they were... No, I... Uh, why, I, why are we imposing tariffs on Mexico now? What's that? Uh, about? Oh, it's due to the border issues that yeah. uh, Trump is saying. Yeah. Trump is saying that the uh, that Mexico isn't doing anything to stop the migrants at their border or to deal with them while they're in their country, and that they're allowing them to flow through. And uh, Trump is also saying that because of that that uh, they're able to send their poor people out of the country that the cartels are uh, able to run drugs and, and control what's going on and, and fit more drugs into our country. And what Phil, and what Phil said is 100% correct. Oh, he's yeah. doing this because Congress won't let him do anything else. Correct. So That's he's right. manipulating what he can manipulate, which is... Is the tariff. 
right. which is a horrible thing. Yeah, yeah. Cool. because that so has nothing to do Congress with the actual worked, problem. If Congress well, worked with him on the on the border, then uh, maybe he Congress wouldn't have would to work with him. They were the working. They with were Congress working with him, but he's he's money, not willing to. He said no. He, he said it's completely my way or the highway. He wouldn't right. negotiate at all. I saw him on television do that. Yes, yes. I saw yeah, it. We saw it. We all saw it. That's except, because they weren't except, giving him a penny for the wall. Pelosi said you That's will not, not get one penny for they the wall. They gave him money. They gave him money already, and he hasn't used it. Schumer, or what's hey, his hey. name? The guy, not Schumer. Um, yeah, who's the guy in the oh. Senate who, who stopped the deal? Okay, that's a, the deal hey, hey, through. Hey, hey, that's a theme song. You hear that? Right. That's a theme right, song. Yeah. Got to, got to get out of here for the next show, which is Jack Bishop in the intersection. Hey, thank you, Josh. Appreciate it. Charlie, appreciate it. Phil, appreciate it. Uh, Rob, good seeing you again. Uh, uh, we like to get you away from baseball. Baseball, and see, we actually kind of didn't. We talked about a lot of other things. Oh, there he is. He's, he's in his in his entertainment room. Uh, Jeff, thank you so much. Thank you to uh, to uh, 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 Tony, and thank you to Ray. Okay, that's our citizen panel, and if they'll all kind of wave goodbye, I'll wave back, okay? And you can all wave out there as well. Okay, that's it, folks. That's our citizens panel for tonight. Uh, let me uh, hang up on them here so that we can uh, uh, make way and leave this line open for the intersection. Uh, I'm Alex Bennett. That's it for tonight. Uh, we'll be back again uh, come uh, Tuesday right after the uh, exchange with Damian Chaplin over most of the same gap net. In the meantime, I'll see you at 10 o'clock Tuesday night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.